Welcome to another Fresh Service Tips and Tricks. My name is Bobby McCullough, Solutions Engineer with Flycast Partners. Today we're going to talk about multi-stage and audit approvals. Approvals are key to any service desk. Uh, you may have requests that come in that you allow an end user customer to, to uh, enter that request, but you need that request approved by someone. Maybe it's their manager, maybe a department head, maybe in the in the instance of like a security change, it's someone that uh, that manages the uh, security within your organization. So there's lots of, of times where you may need to uh, to have an approval. So at its at its core, the approval workflow, like all other workflows, we're going to look for an event to occur. You know, maybe the service request is raised, maybe it's a particular type of service request and so on. But you're going to look for that event to occur to initiate this uh, this approval workflow. And in this instance, we look to see if the cost of that request is over five hundred dollars. Now, if it's over five hundred dollars, we then look to see if it's a VIP user. If it is, we just skip the approvals and we go ahead and assign that ticket to the service request fulfillment team. But if that user is not a VIP user, then we're going to send an approval out to their manager for approval, whoever that that end user customer is and whoever their reporting manager is. Now, this is a key uh, a key thing to remember about these approval workflows. The the approval has uh, an approved uh, trajectory, but it also has a rejected trajectory as well. So where are we going to go in this flow? So you need to make sure that you you handle both of those options. In this case, if the manager rejects it, then we're going to send the requester an email and we're going to automatically close the ticket. If the manager approves it, then we're going to look to see if the cost of that ticket is over a thousand dollars. If it is over a thousand dollars, then we're just going to send it on to the department head for approval, just like we did with the reporting manager. In both instances, if it's rejected, we're going to notify the requester and close the ticket. But if the cost isn't over a thousand, or if the department heads approve, then we're just going to go ahead and assign it uh, to that request fulfillment team. So this multi-stage, multi-level approval workflow is based around cost, but it could be anything. If we go into our conditions here, you can see that I can examine basically anything on the ticket fields. I can examine anything about the requester. If you're requesting it for someone else, you can examine those fields as well. So it's not just cost that you that you might use to uh, to apply one of these approvals. Uh, you, you can you can actually use those conditions to uh, to assign that approval based on anything. Now this is the this is a common use case for approvals. Uh, everyone thinks about approvals along these lines. Someone requests something. It's OK for them to request it, but we don't do the work until someone has approved it. That's very, very common. What is less common, but very, very helpful is maybe an audit type approval. And so an audit type approval is when you need someone to go in and, and look at what happened to. To the work, what happened with the work that was performed? Typically, this is something that might involve budget numbers, you know, when it's going to hit the, the uh, accounting system. And so you may have someone that it's OK for them to go out and work on that ticket and resolve it. But then because it's in finance, you want someone else to. Uh, uh, you want someone else to look at that and approve that. Now, maybe that's Bill over in finance that he always looks at these. Uh, you know, maybe it is uh, someone's manager or something like that. All of those type of options are going to be are going to be configurable. And then obviously here, if uh, if the approval is rejected, then here we're going to change the status back from resolve to pending, and we're going to assign the, a task to a team to go investigate uh, what happened. If the the ticket was approved, then maybe we just go out and set our status as closed. So when you create these these workflows, whether it is uh, an audit workflow or it's a multi-stage approval workflow, you're going to want to test them. 
And the best way to do that is going to be to put yourself in as the recipient of those approvals because you, these are, uh, the workflow automators are going to happen automatically uh, with these approvals. They're going to communicate automatically with your end users and their managers. And so that, that's something that you want to roll out correctly the first time. And so it's going to be key, just like with anything that you're going to configure in the system, you're going to want to test it, but test it against yourself. Hard code the approval to yourself to make sure that it's working properly. And and then you have then you can go back in and, and change it to the reporting manager, department head, and so on. Thank you for watching another Fresh Service Tips and Tricks presented by Flycast Partners. If you like our videos and this content, please like and subscribe to always be updated on the latest tips and tricks. And if you need more Fresh Service help or resources, reach out to Flycast Partners Professional Services at info at flycastpartners.com.